OpenAI, Microsoft, Meta, Elon Musk. When you name drop these in the modern day, everybody thinks of something related to AI. Let's dive down a bit deeper. Sam Altman, Ilya Satskeva, Jan LeCun. For those of you who went down the AI iceberg, these names also ring a bell. What if I tell you that there's a person that most people don't think of when it comes to artificial intelligence? But it's the reason that our innovations and breakthroughs in AI exist in the first place. Why is this person often referred to as the most hated man in AI? And what has all of this to do with Google, OpenAI and Nvidia? Let's talk about the godfather of artificial intelligence. This is Geoffrey Hinton. Hinton was born in December 6, 1947, Wimbledon, UK, London. And that's it for the facts you'll have forgotten right after this video. Geoffrey Hinton comes from an intellectual distinguished family. Now listen closely, his great-great-grandfather, George Boole, was the mathematician that developed the Boolean algebra, the foundation of computer science and digital logic. Fast forward to the grown-up Geoffrey. Hinton was initially drawn to psychology because he was interested in understanding how the human brain works. It drove him toward cognitive psychology psychology and eventually to AI. Although not the inventor of neural networks, Hinton is often called the godfather of artificial intelligence. That was because of his contributions to the field with neural networks via deep learning and backpropagation algorithms. So why godfather? Because the father of artificial intelligence would be Alan Turing in the late 1950s. After this point, AI was solely a playground to teach models simple tasks through training and the interest declined over the next decades. Until Jeffrey Hinton, alongside others, adopted the research of AI in huge scale. What does deep learning and backpropagation and all the fuzz mean? Deep learning is the concept of having deep neural networks. That is, neural networks with many layers and interconnected nodes with them. Each connection of these layers has a weight for predicting the next layer in processing an input. These weights are adjusted many times while training through a process called backpropagation. And this approach makes the trained networks especially powerful for tasks like natural language processing, image and speech recognition. And the skepticism against Hinton began already then. In the 80s when the AI community was largely focused on symbolic AI and expert systems. Neural networks were laughed at as a dead-end idea which will never become reality. The neural networks are a simplified model of how the brain works. Did people tell you, <clears throat> Jeffrey, you're wasting your time. Think of something else to do. Many times. When I was doing my PhD, my advisor would tell me that every week. However, this didn't stop Hinton from progressing in this very field. We could talk for an hour about his contributions and the milestones, but along the way, more or less every aspect of his work led to one key moment, the AlexNet moment. In 2012, Hinton and his students Ilya Satskeva and Alex Krzyzewski joined forces at the University of Toronto to create AlexNet, a convolutional neural network or CNN that is still today considered one of the most influential milestones in computer vision and AI in general. AlexNet was a turning point in AI. Google took the lessons learned from it and invested heavily in the research of neural networks, created the TensorFlow framework for developing deep learning models and reached one milestone after another, all under the lead of Hinton and Satskeva. Hinton involvement with Google and in particular with Google Brain is a significant chapter in the history of AI. Only one year after their breakthrough with AlexNet, Google acquired Hinton's company that he co-founded with his students Ilya and Alex and this acquisition was part of Google's wake-up call to establish dominance in the field of AI. The Google Brain project was already founded in 2011 under the lead of prominent AI figures Andrew Ng and Jeff Dean. When Hinton and Satskeva joined the force in 2013, things were about to lift off. Hinton contributed the power of deep learning to enable Google Brain to never seen highs, leading to advancements in Google Photos, Google Search, Google Assistant and machine learning capabilities in Android devices, personalized recommendations, Google Translate, Google Maps and many more. I guess we all know Nvidia. Nvidia started off with GPUs for, well, gaming. It was in 2012 when Jensen Huang, the CEO of Nvidia, predicted the future of his company to be the ally of the AI industry. Because after experiencing the massive potential of AlexNet by utilizing GPUs for neural network training, Jensen knew he had to transform Nvidia to be ready for the future of AI. And he was 
Damn right. Since the transformation of Nvidia to cater the industry of AI, the company writes an ongoing success story that has never been seen before. Many of today's groundbreaking AI innovations like ChatGPT, DALI or Sora are relying on the support vector that is Nvidia to companies like OpenAI, Microsoft, Google and Meta. And even beyond this, Hinton's most talented student Ilya Satskeva can be seen as the unchanted mastermind behind every breakthrough of OpenAI. If you're interested, you will find the episode about Ilya Satskeva at the end screen of this video. Check it out. So why is it that public figures like Ilya Satskeva, Jan LeCon and others are the chanted heroes and Jeffrey Hinton faces so much criticism and even resentment within the AI community? Hinton, despite his pioneering in the field of AI and even winning the Turing Award in 2018 for his decades of contributions to the field of AI, quit his position as a vice president at Google in May 2023. After this, he was able to speak freely about the risks posed by AI, at conferences, panel discussions and increasing public engagement via interviews. As we put on it. It'll figure out ways of manipulating people to do what it wants. He raised awareness for the never-ending problem of AI hallucination. And people are actually very confident about details they get wrong. They're as confident about those as details they get right. Hinton says that humans, including scientists like himself who build AI systems, still don't really understand how the technology works and evolves. These hallucinations, as they're called, or confabulations, they are exactly what people do. We do it all the time. There's someone called Gary Marcus who criticizes neural nets. And he says neural nets don't really understand anything. They just pass teach together text they've read on the web. Well, that's because he doesn't understand how they work. He's just kind of making up how he thinks it works. Nowadays, many researchers freely admit that they have a lack of understanding how their AI models work. Google's CEO even responded to this, referring to it as AI's black box problem. As Hinton described it, scientists design algorithms for AI systems to pull information from datasets like the internet. When this learning algorithm then interacts with the data, it produces complicated neural networks, which is really good at doing things. But we don't really understand how it is doing those things. Just like we are not really able to tell how the human brain works in detail, we also cannot tell how a simulated brain works yet. Further public statements of Hinton include that AI-enhanced machines would take over if humans aren't careful. Rapidly advancing AI technologies could gain the ability to outsmart humans in five years' time. One of the ways these systems might escape control is by writing their own computer code to modify themselves. Many other AI experts, though, don't seem nearly as concerned as Hinton about humans losing control to AI systems. Jan Lecun, who is, by the way, also a Turing Award winner and for many also considered as the godfather of artificial intelligence has called any warnings that AI could replace humanity preposterous. If AI systems are more intelligent than us, surely they're going to eliminate us, if not by design, simply because they don't care about us. And that's just preposterous for, for a number of reasons. Humans could always put a stop on any technology that becomes too dangerous. These contradicting opinions on the risks of AI evolved to a public discussion with two protagonists. One, Jeffrey Hinton. The other one is Jan LeCon. So the community of AI experts, consumers and the media divided into two camps. Lots of voices have been raised that Hinton is just an alarmist, that he is hindering the progress in the field and even framed him as the whistleblower of the AI community. So what is it now? Is Hinton a brilliant scientist who spent too much time with AI and ended up going mad? Has he discovered really well-founded dangers over his decades of research, but the industry refuses to make it public for the sake of profit? On the one hand, these warnings seem pretty science fiction, considering that ChatGPT has trouble counting the R's in strawberry. On the other hand though, why should a person who is in such a comfortable position give it all up for no good reason? Also, admitting these risks would mean that researchers would potentially no longer be able to work on their project. The motivation to deny these risks is therefore certainly there. It is probably still too early to pass judgment on this matter. What do you think? Has Hinton gone mad or are big corporations hiding the truth for profit? Let me know in the comments. Also, Hinton's part in the evolution of AI is only half of the story. If you want to know about the impact of Hinton's most talented student, you should definitely watch this episode next.